and welcome to part 101. I actually really kind of lied in the last part because I'm not really going to be doing much Cafe and Andrew stuff in this part. I'm actually going to be doing a whole bunch of other side quests. And by a whole bunch of others, I mean like one actually, but it's long so it feels like a bunch of others. That's right, I'm doing two long side quests all at once. Yeah, yeah. But first, we're gonna go and deliver the Pendant of Memories to Andrew. Because if I don't do it now, I'm probably gonna forget, so... There are a lot of ways to screw up this quest, because it's easily the most involved. It's mostly just bringing items back and forth, talking to people, being in the right place at the right time, and there's just some puzzles at the end, but... Uh, for the most part, it's just trading items back and forth, and there are a lot of places where if you... If you start the quest and you don't you know, do the proper sequence of items, you can screw it up and you get an alternative ending to the quest. Of course, only one ending is actually good, because there's only one ending you can have where you uh, get the final mask that you win for doing the whole quest. But there are lots of other masks that you get along the way that you can get even if you fail the quest, so... It's a pretty cool, it's definitely a good quest, and... Um, I don't, I'm not really doing it justice with this playthrough. You really gotta play the game, because if you really engross yourself in the environment and the NPCs, some of the side quests are pretty amazing, and, and this one definitely pretty much defines Majora's Mask to me. So anyway... Wait, wait, hang on. You might remember this guy from the beginning of the playthrough. We're finally gonna talk to him again. Cause he's actually relevant again. This is his private property. He keeps hearing what a moon's tear. If you remember, we got the Moon's Tear in part 99, or 98, I think 99. So, here you go, have a Moon's Tear. I don't want it, it doesn't even do anything. You got a piece of paper, I got a piece of paper, we got a piece of paper, Fag Balls got a piece of paper. Yup. Did I mention I'm on American Idol? a pretty great feat, considering I'm not even American. That's just how, gar how great of a singer I am. Anyway, really a slow cutscene of him leaving. So now that we have the land title deed for town, guess what? No, seriously, guess. I'm not telling you. Definitely the most epic teleportation ever. Now that we have the land title deed, we're gonna need to find somebody to give it to because it's actually pretty useless, other than the fact that it's a piece of paper, which is actually relevant to one of the side quests. I don't think I've actually done that side quest yet. Maybe I have. I forget. So anyway, if you talk to this dude, he sells magic beans if you're a Deku, but if you're a human, he takes this chance to ask if you have some property that he'd like, because he wants to open a business in another place, blah blah blah. So here you go, the town title deed, or town land title deed, whatever, doesn't really matter. So just in case you wanted a Deku flower in the middle of nowhere, you can trade and get this Deku flower. And you get to watch another boring cutscene of somebody flying away into the distance. Man, this is exciting. Alright, now that we have his Deku flower, we can stop watching dumb cutscenes. And lag a little bit, why not? And spin a little bit. And now it's night of the second day. And... Dun, 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 dun. You probably noticed that heart piece up here like, like a long time ago because it's in like one of early, one of the earliest parts when I come to the swamp. But I, I, I chose to put it off till now, even though you can get it much earlier than this, simply because it's faster if I just do this all at once and leave it to the end. I'm really trying to optimize this playthrough and get it done quickly. I could take my time and like try to engross you in the story and everything, but then it would be like 500 parts, so... It's tough. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm complaining. I'm complaining about my own playthrough, I need to stop this. 
Let's have a slow, epic walk through the snow. This pretty much defies everything I just said about rushing through the playthrough, but it's cool. Kind of interrupted by this goddamn spider, but whatever. Yes, I know it's a tech tonight. And a wolfos, or whatever it's called. A snowfos, maybe. Or it might just be a wolfos. I'm pretty sure the wolfos are always gray, though. So, here in the Goron village, there is another Deku that you probably noticed before now. And as you may have guessed by this point in the playthrough, this man wants to talk to a Deku, uh, Deku shrub, or scrub, or whatever. He's selling bomb bags, but he's only selling them to Gorons because he's a racist. Not really, it's just how the game does it. <laughs> he wants to open up a business back home, aka the swamp. So, here's the swamp title deed. And in exchange, a worthless flower. Again, I have to point out the fact that this flower is growing in the snow. Not quite as amazing as the flowers from the first dungeon that were literally growing out of so like solid cement. Some of them were actually growing out of cement that was flying through the air. But, um, I still think it's pretty inc incredible that it's growing in the snow. That's... wow. <laughs> and it's yellow, too, so it's one of the more... it's one of the more healthy Deku flowers, too. So yeah, I guess our next location. <laughs> if you remember, there was another Deku scrub. Deku salesman, whatever. He was back in good old Zora Cape. Well, not really, but near Zora Cape. Leg. There we go. No, I don't want to talk to you, Mr. Owl statue. Anyway, ignoring Lulu because we already saved her. Even though that was in another cycle, but whatever. Anyway, we're back in Zora Hall. I didn't really spend much time in my room. In fact, I don't even know if I ever went in there in this playthrough at all, but you have a room in Zora Hall. It's not this one. I don't know why I talked to this guy. <laughs> But uh, you have a room in Zora Hall, and there's a Deku living there for some reason. I'm not really sure why. You think that there wouldn't be a Deku living in your room, but whatever. Actually, given the text from that guy, it kind of sounds like this might be Lulu's room. Which now I gotta ask where Maiko lives then. But whatever. Oh, you're from the mountains. Not even questioning how we got here, because there's no way the Goron can even enter Zora Hall without magic, but... Never mind. You know what I mean? Yes, I do, blah blah blah. It doesn't really matter what you say, because it's so predictable. <laughs> so yeah, now you have a blue piece of paper. Is it just me, or are these papers getting more and more ridiculous? This Deku, this Deku salesman especially is very, very contrived, I find. I mean, the other, the other two kind of make, actually, the, all the other ones make sort of sense why they would have a flower there, because people would actually come by and buy stuff, but why in hell would you have a flower in somebody's room that no one's even allowed in? Like, are you actually expecting to sell stuff in somebody's room? It doesn't even make sense. Nintendo really didn't think that through. But, whatever. We got another piece of heart. The reason I put this little side quest off to the end of the game is because you need to go to all four areas. And I figured it'd be best if I just waited until I can go there instead of doing the quest over and over again. You know, with a little bit more returns every time. Now we're in Icana Canyon. And we're gonna go talk to the final Deku scrub. Deku salesman. Whatever. Lots of lag for some reason.
I got stuck on a got stuck on the sign there for a second. <laughs> So here's our final Deku scrub, but we're starting to run out of time in this part, so we'll talk to him in the next one. Bye.